Assalamu alaikum. For God's sake, hold thy tongue. Oh, don't be serious. Uh, it's nothing like that. And you haven't done anything like that. It actually is the name of what today's lesson. Uh, eighth class English, lesson number four. For God's sake, hold thy tongue. Friends, in this lesson, I discussed uh, the two evils of uh, bad biting and scandal mongering and the adverse effects they can have uh, on our lives. Uh, let's first summarize the lesson and uh, see what it says. The lesson starts with the translation of an ayat, a holy verse of the Holy Quran. The ayat reads, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Wailun likulli humazatil lumazah. Well, to every kind of scandalmonger and backbiter. In this ayat, the two vices of scandalmongering and backbiting, that is talking or suggesting evil of somebody in any way and belittling of character behind one's back with evil motives, have been condemned in strongest terms, and those who indulge in such activities have been strongly admonished. Then a hadith of the Prophet Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam has been quoted. It says that the similitude of a person who indulges in backbiting is to a man who has eaten the flesh of his dead brother. Friends, we can imagine eating flesh of someone who is dead, and that too of one's own dead brother. How hints and act it can be. And backbiting has been compared to it by the Prophet ﷺ. The argument is further strengthened by the prayer suggested to Hazrat Ibn Hamid anhu by the Prophet peace be upon him on his request. O oh Allah, I seek refuge in thee from the evil of ears, eyes, heart and tongue. It means that not only our hands but our other body parts have the potential to harm others and we should always uh, try to refrain from hurting and harming others and should keep praying to Allah to save us from this. Other religions have also denounced these evils. The Bible says, for we all stumble in many ways and if anyone does not stumble in what he says, he is a perfect man, able to bridle his whole body. That means one who uh, has con control over his tongue and uses it in a right way, has control over his whole body and is a real human. The Gita says, freedom from fear, purity of heart, perseverance in pursuit of knowledge, freedom from the habit of backbiting, compassion for all beings, freedom from avarice. Ahiz, who is born to godlike endowments. Ostentation, pride. Uh, Ahiz, who is uh, born to demoniac endowments. It means that, among other things, a uh, person who uh, refrains uh, from backbiting is uh, godlike. Garantha Sahib says, the slanderer carries the great burden of sins. Without payment, he carries loads. That means slandering is a great sin, and if one does not repent, the load of sins gets increased. Uh, Lord Buddha, in his eightfold path, says that one requires living a life based on uh, right speech. That is, uh, right speech is a way to salvation. And then there is uh, an anecdote of uh, Rabbi Simeon ben Gamaliel, who sent his servant to market twice once to bring something good to eat and next to bring something bad to eat. The servant brought tongues on both the occasions and when asked why did he uh, bring tongue as uh, something good to eat as well as uh, something bad to eat. He said that uh, from uh, tongue issues the good and also the bad. He first further said that there is nothing better than a good tongue in this world and neither is there anything uh, worse than a bad tongue. On this, the rabbi invited his disciples to a meal and served both soft as well as uh, hard tongues before them. Obviously, the disciples ate the soft ones and left the hard ones untouched. To this, uh, the uh, rabbi uh, told them that this meal was arranged to 
teach them the importance of soft tongue and uh, they should use uh, soft tongue in uh, uh, their daily lives. Then is given a quotation by Coles, which reads, Give not thy tongue to great liberty, lest it take thee prisoner. A word unspoken is like the sword in the scabbard, thine. If vented, thy word is in another's hand. If thou desire to be held wise, be so wise as to hold thy tongue. It means that if we don't take care of what we are saying, and do not have uh, control over our tongue, it will take us its prisoner. Unspoken words are like a sword in the scabbard. If uttered, if said, they go into another's hand and can be used against us. Mm -hmm. Wise are those who use their tongue judiciously and who know how to do it. And at the end of the lesson is given a prayer, a very good prayer for us to recite. My God, guard my tongue from evil and my lips from speaking deceit. Be my soul silent to those who reproach me. Be my soul humble to all as the dust. Amen. Dear friends, the lesson is called For God's sake, hold thy tongue. 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 For God's sake, hold thy गिवत और एब जोई कुरान शरीफ की एक आयत दी हुई है बिस्मिल्लाहिर्रहमानिर्रहीम वाइलुल लिकुल्ले हुमाज़तिल लुमाज़ा बड़ी खराबी है बर्बादी है हर ऐसे शख्स की जो एब ढूंढने वाला गिवत करने वाला हो आप समझ सकते हैं कि इन दो बुराइयों के बारे में बहुत बड़ी वहीद आई है खबरदार किया गया है लोगों को कि इन दो बुराइयों से बचा जाए उसके बाद हजूर सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम की एक हदीस शरीफ है जिसमें कहा गया है कि गैबत करने वाले शख्स की मिसाल एक ऐसे इंसान की सी है जिसने अपने मुर्दा भाई का गोश्त खाया हो आप समझ सकते हैं किसी मुर्दा का गोश्त खाना खास तौर पे किसी मुर्दा इंसान का और वो भी अपने मुर्दा भाई का गोश्त खाना कितना करहियत अमेज हो सकता है तो इसकी मिसाल गैबत की मिसाल ऐसे ही शख्स से दी गई है इस बात में और वजन पैदा करने के लिए एक और हदीस शरीफ दी गई है حضرت ابن حمید رضی اللہ عنہ کی درخواست پر حضور صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم نے انہیں ایک دعا تجویز کی ایک دعا عطا فرمائی اے اللہ میں آپ کی پناہ مانگتا ہوں اپنی آنکھوں کے شر سے اپنے کانوں کے شر سے اپنے دل کے شر سے اور اپنی زبان کے شر سے ہم دیکھ سکتے ہیں کہ نہ صرف ہاتھ اور زبان بلکہ ہم اپنے جسم کے باقی آزا سے بھی باقی حصوں سے بھی نقصان پہنچا سکتے ہیں ہمیں कोशिश करनी चाहिए कि हम दूसरों को नुकसान पहुंचाने से बचें और अल्लाह से दुआ करें कि वो हमें इससे बचाए इस तरह से दीगर मजाब का हवाला भी दिया गया है बाइबल में है कि इंसान अपनी जिंदगी में मुख्त तरह से ठोकरें खाता है लेकिन ऐसा शख्स जिसकी जुबान में लड़खड़ाए जो अपनी जुबान को काबू में रखे वो एक मुकम्मल इंसान है और उसका अपने पूरे जिसम पर कंट्रोल हासिल है गीता में दिया गया है कि खौफ से नजात दिल की सफाई इल्म की तलाश में इस्तेकामत गिबत की आदत से आजादी तमाम मखलूक के लिए रहमदिली बुखल से मुक्ति अगर जिस शख्स में ये सारी चीजें पाई जाती हूं वो देवता के जैसा है देवता समान है इस तरह से गुरु ग्रंथ साहिब में है कि बहतान लगाने वाला शख्स अपने कानू पे बहु गुनाहों का भोज लिए फिरता है तो वह ना करे तो ये भोज बढ़ता ही रहता है ला गौतम बुधा एट फोल्ड पाथ में कहते हैं कि हमारी हमें अपनी जिंदगी को बेहतर जबान पर आधारित करना चाहिए उसके बाद रबी सिमियन बन गमेलियन कि एक हकायत एक वाक्य दिया गया है उसने अपने नौकर को दो बार बाजार भेजा कि वो कुछ खाने के लिए लाए पहले कुछ अच्छा और उसके बाद कुछ ऐसा जो अच्छा न हो नौकर दोनों बार जुबान ले आया जब उसे पूछा गया कि उसने ऐसा क्यों किया तो उसने कहा कि जुबान से अच्छा भी किया जा सकता है और बुरा भी उसने मजीद कहा कि दुनिया में अच्छी जबान से बेहतर कोई चीज नहीं हो सकती और नहीं बुरी जबान से बदतर कोई चीज हो सकती है 
इस पर रबी ने अपने चेलों को की एक दावत की और उनके सामने सख्त और नरम जुबान रखी खाने के लिए चेलों ने नरम जुबान खाई और सख्त जुबान को ऐसे ही रहने दिया तो रबी ने उनसे कहा कि ये दावत का अहतमाम इसीलिए किया गया था कि आपको नरम जुबान की अहमियत समझाई जाए और आपको जिंदगी में नरम जुबान ही अपनानी चाहिए कॉल्स की कोटेशन दी गई है जिसमें बताया गया है कि हमें अपनी जुबान को बहुत ज्यादा आजादी नहीं देनी चाहिए कि ये हमें अपना कैदी बना ले जो अल्फाज हमने कहे न हो जो हम हमारे पास ही रहे हों तो वो हमारे होते हैं उस तलवार की तरह जो नियम में हो जैसे ही हम बोल देते हैं तो ये अल्फाज दूसरे के हाथों में चले जाते हैं और इनको हमारे खिलाफ इस्तेमाल किया जा सकता है दाना इंसान अपनी जुबान का सही इस्तेमाल करते हैं और अपनी जुबान का सही इस्तेमाल करना जानते हैं लसन के आखिर में एक दुआ दी गई है जिसमें ये कहा गया है कि माई गॉड गार्ड माई टंग फ्रॉम इवल एंड माई लिप्स फ्रॉम स्पीकिंग डिसीट बी माई सोल साइलेंट टू दोच मी बी माई सोल हम्बल टू ऑल एज द डस्ट अल्लाह मेरी जुबान को शर से बचाइए मेरी होंटों को धोखादेही और फरेब कहने से बचाइए मुझे उन लोगों की तरफ से खामोश कर दे जो मुझे बुरा भला कहते हों जो मुझे इल्जाम देते हों और मेरी रूह को तमाम मखलूक के लिए नरम हलीम बना दे आमिर सो फ्रेंड्स द समरी ऑफ द लेसन नाउ लुक एट दिस वर्ड ड्यू डाउन इट अपरेंटली वी कैन सी दैट दिज आर टू वर्ड्स ड्यू एंड डाउन बट एक्चुअली इट इज जस्ट वन वर्ड इट अपियर्स इन द फर्स्ट इन द first paragraph second line of this lesson i'll read the sentence it is common in humans to do down others by speaking ill of them behind their backs do down means to belittle or to intimidate it actually is uh, just one word although we can see it is made up of two uh, separate words do and down but uh, when they come together uh, they form a new word with some which may have a different meaning individually we can see that this first word do is a verb and the second word down is an adverb when such a construction takes place uh, of two words the new word formed is called a phrasal verb so phrasal verb is a word is a is a is a verb a uh, two or three worded verb which consists of a verb and a particle the particle can be a preposition and adverb or both the combined effect of uh, this is a word and uh, which we uh, obviously call a uh, phrasal verb For the meaning of the phrasal verb may as i said be uh, may not depend on the meaning of the uh, constituent words as we can see do down means to be little uh, these may help as i said uh, more two or uh, two or three words uh, the uh, verb has a particle with it it can have a preposition with it it can have an adverb with it it can have two prepositions two adverbs a preposition and an adverb added to it look for example at these words look for look for means to search and uh, for example we can use it in a sentence he is looking for his uh, keys and here are three words in a phrasal verb look forward to look forward to means to wait eagerly for something i am looking forward to my final exams there are some more uh, phrasal verbs given here sit up put on die out give in stand down put about now uh, you have to guess the meaning of these words these uh, phrasal verbs these phrasal verbs uh, in uh, actuality we can say that uh, these are made up of two separate meaningful uh, words which are uh, uh, independent uh, units in themselves such words actually are called compound words so phrasal verbs are compound words now here are given some uh, two columns in column 1 there are some words and in column 2 there are some words what you have to do you have to join these uh, words from column 1 with the uh, words with column 2 for example one is uh, done for you this is b- book and verb this book verb when they combine they form a new word that's book verb similarly here is a word what and here is ever when these two combine they form a new word that's whatever now combine the remaining words and form new words and write them here 
after you have done that, see how uh, they are uh, written and then guess their meaning. You have to do two things. First, see how they are written and then guess their meaning. And after you have done that, you have guessed the meaning of these words, these phrasal verbs and these uh, new words, these compound words. You, will have, uh, you may have to look them up in a good dictionary. That's all for now. We will be back with the exercise of this lesson in our next class very soon. Till then, stay indoors, stay healthy. Goodbye and Khuda Hafiz.